Welcome once again to Leto's Law. Here's Steve Leto. I've got a story sent to me by a lot of people here by Nico DiMattia from the Drive.com. FBI investigating Florida classic car dealer accused of huge title fraud scheme. That sounds complicated, but it's not. The, uh, the argument is that people think that he took cars in a consignment to sell them, sold them, and then pocketed the money. Or at least didn't give the money to the person who actually owned the car. So the man's the owner of the now bankrupt FSD Hot Rod Ranch. He recently went face-to-face with creditors to whom he owes money. After filing for Chapter 7 back in December, he listed almost 100 creditors and owes more than $4 million in liabilities. Despite the police department and FBI investigating him for fraud, he told his creditors during a recent Zoom session that his business simply failed. He said, I deeply regret that you lost money, according to a person from WKMG Click Orlando. It was simply a business plan I could not make work. However, many of his customers would argue otherwise. Uh, Supposedly, FSD stands for Father, Son, Daughter. Hot Rod Ranch bought and sold hot rods and classic cars, but many of its customers either failed to get their money or didn't receive the car they bought. At least one customer received a fraudulent title, oops, leaving them in debt to the bank for the car, but unable to legally register and or drive it. And by the way, you have to understand what's probably going on here is the guy's probably a broker. And you might say, Steve, what's the difference? Well, see, a used car dealer buys and sells cars on behalf of themselves. So you go to a dealership, you buy the car from them. You trade a car in, you sell it to them. Now, a broker says, oh, bring me the car, put it in my inventory. I will sell it for you. And when we sell the car, you get your money and I get a slice for the work I did. And so interestingly, even when you buy and sell a car to a car dealer or from a car dealer, They don't title it in their own names quite often, but there's something to indicate it passed through their hands. But in most places, car brokers never take ownership of the car. They simply have it in their possession to sell it. And that is a big, big difference. It's a big difference. So when a car comes in to be sold and they sell it, they now have money that they owe to that person. And if they use that money for any other purposes, Um, you've got a little bit of a problem. During the Zoom session, a guy from Utah asked the man about $28,000 he was owed. In 2022, the dealership agreed to sell the man's 1972 GMC Sierra and the man shipped his truck to FSD in Florida. So he was supposed to pay $28,000 within 90 days under a delayed payment agreement but never did. The dealer said, I sincerely apologize for that. Oh, you sincerely apologize. (laughs) To which the man responded, BS, but he used the full word. Uh, He was not accepting the apology, apparently. Meanwhile, a woman claimed to have bought a 1931 Ford Model A replica with her late fiancé from FSD for $25,000. After her fiancé passed away, she realized that she never received a title. So now she owes the bank for a car that she cannot legally drive, but she has possession of it. But the dealer never gave her the title because he doesn't have it. Another creditor interrupted this uh, car dealer uh, and said that he still has the title because he was the one who gave the car to the man to sell, and he's never been paid $17,000 for the car. And so according to Florida state law, it's illegal to sell a vehicle without having possession of its title. And so that's one of those little nuances. And I've mentioned before that there's actually a manual you can find in Michigan on the Secretary of State's website. It's the car dealer manual. And it has all the rules and regulations that car dealers have got to follow. And so if you're a broker, you go to the section on brokers. If you're a used car dealer, you go to the section on used cars. And you can find these things out. And so you can imagine the problems that would arise if car dealers weren't required to have titles in hand when they sold cars. And so that's something I hear about periodically, where someone will say, Steve, I bought a car for this little car dealership, and, and I never got a title. And they call the dealership up, and the, somebody confesses, well, we didn't have the title ourselves. Like, you know, and it's like, don't you, 
You can't try to sell it if you haven't got the title. I'm talking about in your hand, actually physical possession of the title. I've heard of stories of somebody who sold a car to somebody and then died. And the title never got handed over. And it's, it, I mean, it can be done, that can be fixed, but it's a real pain in the rear end. There are currently 27 complaints to the Better Business Bureau about this dealership, all with similar stories of either not being paid, not getting titles, or simply not getting cars they paid for. Even an electrician asked the man if he'd ever get his $8,000 he's owed for work done at the dealership, and the salesman said, I don't think so. So the guy had to sit through this hearing and just get verbally abused, but uh, I think he deserves worse. According to him, there are no more vehicles in his possession, and the last of the cars either went back to the owners or to buyers. But he since then filed bankruptcy, and he shut the doors on the business. He mortgaged his $1 million 10-acre residential property and is renting it to an event planning company to hold weddings and other venues there. However, they uh, are owned by a former model whose social media indicates uh, is in a personal relationship with the man. He told creditors that he's not yet received any payment from the people renting his property, but he is renting it to them. So the website for the dealership is now shut down, but you can still check out their archive version. The criminal investigations by the police department and the FBI are currently ongoing. I seem to recall a story out of California that was quite similar to this, and that was a dealership that offered to sell your high-end collector car and or sports car, and they would do that for you. And sadly, a lot of businesses that do consignments get caught up in something like this. And I can think of several examples. One of my favorites was a guitar store, a store that sold guitars and musical instruments in Oakland County, Michigan. And I do not play a musical instrument, but I've got several brothers who do. And uh, they bought and sold guitars over the years. And um, I, I, I know people who said that they had dropped a guitar off at this particular store and said, you know, can you sell this guitar for me? And the guy goes, yeah, I think I can. Quickly sign a little agreement saying you're going to do that. You tell them how much you want, and they're going to tell you how much you're going to get. And uh, then a couple weeks goes by and nothing. On a whim, the guitar owner stops by the store and there's somebody else behind the counter. So they walk around looking for their guitar and it's nowhere to be found. And they go up to the counter and go, hey, by the way, do you have a such and such? And they name that exact guitar. And the person goes, uh, no, we don't at this time. I'm sorry. And then, of course, the owner says, well, here's the problem. I dropped one off three weeks ago and I don't see it in here. Has it been sold? Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, Russell, Russell, uh, paper, paper, Russell, paper. Uh, just sold it 10 minutes ago. In fact, did, didn't you see the guy walk out the front door with it? He, he, the guy, I, I was just about to call you. Your name is... <laughs> and unfortunately, there are businesses out there that um, are run this way because... There's several different skill sets that go into running a business. And this is something a lot of people don't catch on to. So you can be the greatest salesperson on earth. Doesn't make you a good manager of a business. You can be the best attorney in a courtroom. Doesn't mean you can run a law firm. And I hear these stories all the time about people who are running businesses of one sort or another, and they're seemingly doing well. I mean, there's a lot of cars moving in and out of that place. That means they must be making money, right? No. And so what's going on? It's hard to say. Maybe the guy's rent is too high, although I think they claim he owned it. Uh, maybe, maybe he's got bad overhead that he can't get under control for some reason. Maybe he shouldn't have hired his mother and his daughter or his sister or whoever the other relatives were. Father, son, daughter. Maybe he shouldn't have hired his kids. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But the point is that somehow he's, he's got these cars passing through inventory and he's losing money, and he claims that it is simply a difficult business to run. And by the way, it probably is. I know people in the car business, and I know car dealers, I know car brokers, I know people who buy and sell cars for a living. Uh, I know the guy. I know. I know a guy who owns a B lot, which is a used car dealer. I know a broker. I know. I, and these guys make it, but that's because they're both good at selling and buying the cars, and they know how to run the business. But here's a guy 
who couldn't, and I doubt that he set out to steal from anybody. But what happens is, and I'm giving you a hypothetical here, is you got a bunch of bills sitting on your desk, and they're threatening to shut the power off. And suddenly you sell a car, and the money is sitting right there, right there. Now, you owe this money to somebody who's in Utah, but the, sh- the lights are about to get shut off. So you pay the power bill and a bunch of other bills, and as long as you sell another car soon, you can pay the guy in Utah. Just don't tell him the car sold. The same way you don't tell somebody the guitar sold. <laughs> just, it just sold. You didn't see that? <laughs> and one of the businesses I'm talking about was famous for that. Famous. But, but they got away with it for a long period of time because they were pretty much the only game in town. And so I've, I've known and I've heard of other stories, uh, consignment stores, where people would drop stuff off for consignment. And they would not get paid unless they went back in and said, where's my stuff? Just sold it. So we'll see what happens. Because if you go into bankruptcy, you can be protected from your creditors, but there are occasions where you won't be. And so if you simply run your business badly, there's a good chance you're going to walk away from this. However, if it's shown that you were stealing, okay, or doing other things that were wrong, you might not be shielded. And the fact that the police and the FBI are investigating, obviously the local police are investigating because people are simply complaining, going, I paid this guy money, didn't get a car. Or I dropped my car off and he sold it without paying me. Isn't that some kind of, I don't know, theft or something? And then, of course, the FBI, because this is all interstate commerce, using the wires and the mails. And so the fact that there's a guy in Utah who says he shipped his car here across state lines, it got sold in Florida. Hey, I feel I'm wearing a shirt from Florida. Uh, That does not happen often. (laughs) That's random. But he ships the car from Utah to Florida. It crosses a bunch of state lines. and, and, And then stuff is being communicated back and forth using the Internet and the mails and all this stuff. And it has an interstate feel to it. So the FBI is involved. So that's not good for him either. So I hope you did not consign your car to father, son, daughter, hot rod ranch. uh, Because a lot of people who did got hurt. And I hate to see these stories. Because, you know, there's a good chance these people won't get their money back. Because even if he's not protected in bankruptcy, let's suppose they say you do not get to walk away from his death in bankruptcy. Okay, you sue him, you get a judgment against him. And what do you do with that if the guy can't pay that? I mean, you can chase him around for a while. And I, by the way, I know people who on principle will do that. <laughs> How long can I chase him? At least 10 years. So there you go. Thanks to everybody who sent this from the drive.com. Nico DiMattia wrote that. FBI investigating Florida classic car dealer accused of huge title fraud scheme and for selling cars and not handing the money over and also not handling the titles over and also just getting things in and not paying for them, which is not good. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I'm investing in vintage comic books, as if I don't have enough issues already.